Alrighty, welcome to a four on four cube draft. It is myself, Talisker, <laughs> the tank, and uh, potatoes battling against ooh, a murderous row of Troll Ascetic, Max Smith, uh, Will, and Connor. So, some frequent drafters, some infrequent drafters, and a pretty strong pack. Pick one, pack one. There's Swords to Plowshares, Solitude, Shieldred, and Atroxa. These are all great cards. There's also Wheel of Fortune and Marsh Flats. Like, someone's going to get a six pick wheel or fetch or something um i'm passing to mac huh hmm <laughs> hmm i kind of want to take swords to plowshares i think atrox is pretty good swords is just such a busted card i feel like i always just am very happy when i take swords so i'm gonna take swords pass a bunch of good stuff hope mac takes a solitude out of that pack but i think he's a little more likely to take atrox or shieldred and i'm gonna take mystic confluence i love mystic confluence and blue white control I also love, there's also Dismember, Sneak if you took Atroxa maybe, and Wooded Foothills, but I think this is a pretty easy Mystic Confluence from my point of view. And then here, well, you know, we got a Tundra. Can't complain about that. Taking good white card, good blue card, and then Tundra, just a classic beta Tundra. I guess, yeah, technically this is beta, not alpha. In any case, uh, passing up on Fiery Confluence is the best card. There's a possibility we get Spell Queller, Scrubland, Sword of the Meek back, maybe Lazav. If there's some kind of Esper Brew coming, but I'm happy to just take Tundra. Matt, Troll Sedic, did not does not know that I first picked a white card. So he might think that I took Mystic Confluence, but he, he won't know about the Tundra. And I'm going to take Remand here. I love Remand. We, we are setting up nicely. Haven't passed much Atroxa support, but have, besides the Sneak, but have passed some good, other good white cards. I could definitely see Mac... Having taken Solitude, go into white. And here I'm going to take Arid Mesa to go with my Tundra. I like Path to Exile, but I already have a Swords. You can get other removal spells, and Arid Mesa to make my uh, blue-white deck work is awesome. Plus, Arid Mesa is actually a great fetch land. Even better, I think, than Flooded Strand here, because Splashing Red is something that a uh, blue-white often wants to do. Oh, this is interesting. There's a True Name here and a Time Warp, and both those cards are pretty good, but there's also a Brain Freeze. And... I kind of like specking here because Mac won't know that I got a brain freeze, especially one six pick. In fact, that means that every other per this that means that uh, Connor opened it. Yeah, so there's a pretty good chance that I could get past a Underworld Breach in the next pack, or maybe even in pack three. I think the upside of brain freeze is high enough that I I'm willing to give up Time Warp and True Name and GT. I guess they're all fine cards. And GT to follow Matt's uh, or uh, Max Stoneforge is nice, but uh, I think Brain Freeze is really high upside. Who? I'll take a Palace Jailer seventh pick. Don't mind if I do. And again, this is maybe the reward for Matt not knowing that I started on a, a good white card, because now I get to slam Palace Jailer, still pass a bunch of white cards, so it looks like white's open. I'm passing an Exhum, and maybe I don't play the Brain Freeze. Had I known I was getting a seventh pick Palace Jailer, I would have taken the True Name. But ooh, now I can take Plateau to go with this Arid Mesa and. Just have the mana for a great Jeskai deck. That just means cards, like a whole dimension of cards get opened up for me, which is awesome. And now there's Elite Spellbinder versus Sea Chrome Coast versus Unexpectedly Absent. There's also Metamorph and Revoker. I like those a little less. My mana's pretty good. Maybe I don't have to take Sea Chrome Coast. I do like Elite Spellbinder. I like Absent too, but I think Elite Spellbinder is pretty great. Yeah, I would trade Brain Freeze for a True Name Nemesis at this point, but... I got two good, like, white aggressive creatures. And now there's Mentor versus Odawara. I'm not going to take a Danto Vanguard or either of these lands. I think I'm just going to take Odawara. I just like having extra spells. Okay, Scrubland Wield. I'll take it as a spec. Portable Hole and Starmheim Unleash both Wield, as well as City of Traitors. I don't love City of Traitors that much. I'm just going to take Portable Hole. Pass a late City of Traitors. I guess I'll take Questing Beast, I think, is the best of these cards. Going into pack two, I've got a really good start to blue, white, red. A blue, white control deck, or kind of like a mid range deck, depending on how Elite Spellbinder and Palace Jailer, where, they, where those lead me. I'll, I'll just hate a Titania here. <clears throat> I don't think Max that likely to be on green, but I think Titania is a much higher upside card than Nettle Cyst. Way more likely to be something that he would be interested in. And then last pick, I'm going to get something here, and then we'll be on to the next pack. All right, Knight of Autumn, sure. All right, pack two here. Have a pretty good direction, but, you know, could could use more. Um, hmm. Uh, not a great pack. 
Jace Friend's Prodigy is pretty good with Swords to Plowshares, can be good with Mystic Confluence. I don't want Spellbook Vendor Usher. I don't think it's crazy to take Basalt Monolith, though, I mean, there's a Kinnon in the pack already. There's also Inti. Inti is a very strong card, and I have the mana for it. This could be a, a Jeskai Tempo deck. I don't think I have the mana for Bankbuster. Like, for Bankbuster, you want mana acceleration or lots more cheap plays, though I guess I'm doing pretty well in the cheap plays. I think I'm just going to take Jace. Jace is just a very reliable, good card. Oh, now there's a Luris. I love Luris, but I'd have to give up Elite Spellbinder and Palace Jailer. I already have a Scrubland, too, for four colors. I don't mind giving up Elite Spellbinder. I think Luris Companion is worth it. <clears throat> Plus, the next best card, I guess, is Meticulous Archive. I don't really want to take a Meticulous Archive this early. And then now, of course, there's Urza and Skyclave, but I actually think Force of Negation is just an awesome card. So let's take Force of Negation and maybe get back Cathar Commando or Thieving Skydiver. I think I, I think I really do like having access to Force of Negation, who don't look much like a brain freeze deck at the moment but you never know Ooh, dress down with luris is also pretty sick so is scholar of new horizons though scholar can get any color of mana well can get blue and can get red off plateau and tundra which is pretty nice all right i think i'm kind of in for that over jace and then maybe wheel dress down or intrepid adversary i do like scholar with luris and i think luris is worth it now now i can take pirate spellbomb that's an awesome card with luris i'll pass up on savannah i don't mind that too much and bob i do like bob but i think pirate spellbomb luris is a really strong combo i just think luris is a, is a really nutty card so i don't mind going into luris direction Ooh, now there's led i'll take led because then i'll have led and brain freeze if i get a breach it is on and led luris already has some combos with it i'm not sure if i'm gonna play it but I think this looks pretty good. Had I not <clears throat> gone down the Luris path, I probably would have taken Cryptic Coat out of this pack, but I like where I'm at. And then here, I really don't want to play any of these cards. I might take Candelabra because I kind of have the start of an Academy deck, and I don't care much about Dark Depths or hating a green card. Oh, and then here we have Sensei's Top. Yeah, we actually could end up being an Academy deck. I think that that would be kind of funny to backdoor into it, but... It is possible. There's also, remember, to scrub land in case we need that. This also looks like a pretty good Luris control deck. Just having cheap interaction and counter spells and then Luris plus some things to bring back for value is a really effective strategy at winning the game. And then here, um, I don't have green for Haywire Might. I don't really want Shadow Spear. I'm not going to use do Kinnon because someone else took the Monolith and I couldn't even play it anyway. I could take Seat in case I get Academy. I could take Spellbook Vendor, but I don't even think this is much of a Spellbook Vendor deck. I'll, I'll just spec on Seat of the Synod. I think that Seat of the Synod can be pretty nice. Ooh, and then here there's a Thought Scour. Thought Scour is great with Luris and Jace. I love that. Passing a Serap Paragon. And then now Cathar Commando came back. I do like Lotus Field, especially with Candelabra. But Cathar Commando Luris is also really sick, so I think I'd rather have that. Because I'm not going to play Candelabra unless I get Academy. And... Cathar Commando is really strong, so I'll be happy taking that. And then Intrepid Adversary came back, happy with that too. All right, this is looking pretty good. I think it's more likely than not Brain Freeze gets in. Ooh, I'll take a Dark Confront just in case. Um, but we'll have to see. I guess I have a Scrubland here. Yeah, Dark Confront in a Luris deck is sick. I guess if I don't get Breach, Brain Freeze is looking kind of dicey. Is LED still good is kind of the question. So what it's useful for is you can... Sack it for, like, if you have no cards in hand, sack it for three to put Luris into your hand. Use it to pay for cards out of your graveyard with Luris. Like, it has some utility there. I guess I'll take Uro, because I think it's a little bit more likely to be important than uh, Ovalenwald Oddity. All right, pack three. All we want is Underworld Breach, though we'd like to first take a Time Walk and then get, like, a third pick Underworld Breach. You know, something like that. The only thing that's brutal is that I don't think Troll is going to pass me an Underworld Breach unless... Unless he kind of has to, because he knows he passed me a late brain freeze. Um, okay, we bricked on that. We bricked pretty hard, but there is preordain and currency converter. And I think, uh, what a what a bad first pick. I think I'm going to take preordain. It's just a busted card. Uh, currency converter is good. I think I'd rather just have the preordain, especially with Jace. Ooh, balance and bobble. 
I do like balance in this kind of deck because you can kind of store value in Luris and then balance. I like Selfless Spirit, but I think I'll wheel that. I also like Chain Lightning a lot, but this is looking like a sick balance deck. So I'll, I'll take balance and really hope to find a breach, but probably won't find one. Here I'm going to get Gitaxian Probe over more expensive cards. And if Benevolent Bodyguard wheels, I'll be happy with it, but... I think Probe is a very good card. All right, let's just take the Brain Freeze and the LED out for now. I don't think I would actually run LED without the Underworld Breach stuff, but I'm not sure. All right, and here we've got Chromatic Star, which is good with Luris and Balance, and we have Wasteland, which is just a good card. I think I'd rather take the Star here. Having extra Luris combo stuff is, is pretty important. And it's good. The fact that it's good with Balance is good. Plus, if somehow we get a fifth pick to Learn Academy. Look, I passed Matt a late... Urza, which maybe if he didn't take it means I, I could get passed back at Tolarian Academy. He might think that's a safe thing to do. <laughs> I'm not sure about all that, but, you know, one can always hope. Mana-wise, I'm feeling pretty good, though. We didn't get any more lands after pack one, unfortunately, so I could use, like, one more land if possible. Oh, and there's Verdant. So Verdant gets Scrubland, so it's a black-white land. There's also a Mother of Runes. Mother of Runes is a really good card. Nothing else here really qualifies so much so do i want a verdant which may or may not be good or mother of runes bear in mind that passing verdant is also worse because i'm passing it to mac who will probably be able to make use of it now nah, i'm still gonna take mother of runes mother of runes Luris is too strong oh and there's a ragavan well, i'll take the ragavan too six pick huh must have been a hell of a pack all right two more picks for breach this deck would be so sick if i got a breach but honestly if i get like another land or two i'm not going to complain well Two lands might be a lot. If I get like one more good land and one more medium land, how about that? Is that a reasonable ask? Uh, there's a Mishra's Bobble. I, I kind of got to take Bobble. I do like Phantasmal Image too with Luris, but Bobble Luris is, is so disgusting. So we'll, we'll Bobble here. We are passing on like a good red-white tap land. I would play that. And a Ballista and a Malcolm, like a lot of actual good Luris stuff. All right, the 38th pick, Underworld Breach. You know, team, we can do it. <laughs> I, I don't think that's going to happen. I do not think that is likely to happen, but we got close on it at least. Let's see if we can pick up another playable or another land out. Either one of those would, would be pretty good. I guess I'm at 19, 20 land right now, but I have another couple of cards I could potentially play. And I am going to wheel a playable or two. I would be shocked if that didn't happen. All right, and a not shocking twist, we didn't get the Underworld Breach. And here we have to decide between Unholy Heat and Baleful Strix. Uh, or days. Those are all pretty legit. I've got two black sources. I mean, I'm, I think I want to play Confront. Baleful Strix is really good with Luris. Removal is also really good, though. I guess I have Portable Hole and Swords to Plowshares and Balance. Mm. Or I just take days because days is an awesome card. I think I'm going to take the Baleful Strix. I like the Strix. Oh, Fire Covenant this late. There's also Prismatic Ending and Council's Judgment. Oh, I hate passing Mac this late Fire Covenant, but I can't really play it. And I think Council's Judgment is going to be better for me than Prismatic Ending. Just killing anything is really nice. All right. All right. Selfless Spirit came back. I, oh, man, Luminarch's also really good. I already have Mother of Runes to protect Luris, and I'd probably get back Benevolent Bodyguard. I'm going to take the Luminarch. Yeah, Bodyguard did come back. I'll take that two over Silent Clearing, I think. And I guess last pick, I'll take a Glimmer Lens that maybe I'll play. An Adeline that no one's going to play. And <laughs> I guess Avacyn's Pilgrim is the better elf. Oh, a green-white land. Last pick, which does not help me at all. All right. This deck had some potential, which didn't get realized with the Underworld Breach missing. But uh, that was a, a risk I was willing to take. And uh, I, I think I ended up with a pretty nice little Luris deck. Let's get to deck building. All right, not a very difficult deck build, to be honest. <laughs> Just cutting the Sensei's top gets us to enough lands. Not going to play the LED, I don't think. <sighs> My problem with LED, though, oh, I should actually, I should play the Lush Portico over a Plains for sure. The reason to do this is I can fetch it with either Arid Mesa or Scholar, which is pretty good. In any case... I think the LED is just going to be too narrow. It's only good. It's good with Luris, which I, I do find every game. I feel like drawing LED is just not something I'm generally going to be super happy about. And I kind of like everything else that's going on. Two swamps, one mountain with, alongside the chromatic star. I think we're okay on fixing. And yeah, a solid little Luris deck. I, it could have been awesome with the breach. 
could have used another land or two, but overall, I mean, I've got like Remand, Force Negation, Mystic Confluence, Swords to Plowshares. Oh, I got to switch. That's the Warhammer one. And uh, Balance and Council's Judgment. Some good interaction and a bunch of good creatures in a Lura stack, which is kind of what I'm looking for. All right. Talisker up to his usual tricks with like a Sultai value deck mm, with a potential Oath sideboard. But uh, yeah, this deck's all right. It's got Mind Twist with some Mana Ramp, DT, Necromancy, <coughs> Troll, Get Rog Monster, Cryptic Coat's pretty good. Decent mana. All right, it's a fine deck. Nothing special. Potatoes has a Mana Crypt Natural Order with Double Initiative deck. Yeah, and then also Flash with Torsten Gruff Triplets. All right, he's going to swap out the Golos for a Primeval Titan, but also Strip Mine, Wasteland, Crucible, Ramanop. Yeah, this deck looks great. Very good deck. And then the tank on kind of just five color with Time Walk Tamio. You do love that. Spellseeker. Bunch of talismans, a green mox, a bunch of a bunch of fixing lands, Fate Wild Caretaker. Ooh, Displacer Kitten Tamio too. All right, nice little time walk mox deck. Well, let's see how round one goes. All right, time for round one. I would like to play first. Reveal a uh, Lurus Reno. And well, this hand seems perfectly fine. I'm still not sure about that Lion's Eye Diamond. I'm gonna I'm gonna play these games as if I had an extra eighth card. It's a Lion's Eye Diamond, and I'll see if it would have come up. Like for example. I don't think with this hand it's going to come up until after I cast Mystic Confluence, so I don't know. All right, what am I playing against? Pyrokinesis, Island, Time Warp, Subtlety, Ponder. Okay, that's a pretty good-looking blue-red deck over there. Ponder probably finds a a red source, and I'll get my Jace Arc Trailed. That's okay. Island and Ponder. Pyrokinesis is also pretty good against my deck. I just have a lot of creatures in my deck, so I wouldn't be surprised if that card ends up being pretty annoying. Though it's a lot, lot worse once I know about it. Both Subtlety and Pyrokinesis, I mean, this is why Probe is so broken. Getting to know about those cards? Awesome. All right, I want to just see. Did not shuffle. Lucky. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm still just going to play the Jace. Like, it doesn't really get better waiting. And uh, I could also... Force of Negation if I really wanted to, but I don't think that's a very good play. This game's going to go long. I'm going to hardcast Force, then I'm going to hardcast Mystic Confluence. All right. Oh, Young Pyromancer. Oh, interesting. Okay. Going to let me Jace here. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I will. And I think I'm going to discard Scholar. Just go land Council's Judgment and just get that. Young Pyromancer right off the battlefield. I don't want that thing making a bunch of tokens. All right, so it looks like maybe Arc Trail eats my Jace now. It makes sense to wait a turn. You get to you get to maybe get a token out of the deal. And here comes Arc Trail. Yep. And probably nothing else. And then I'm gonna draw Baleful Strix, huh? I think I'm going to put Luris into hand now because I don't see Connor playing a card next turn. In fact, Connor might want to leave up Subtlety. Oh, I don't have to play Luris into it. I can just play my land. Basically, I thought if I just didn't do anything that turn, I would just waste my mana. Now I got to use my mana. Oh, and I drew a Swamp, which is really awesome. Let's just pass the turn. I have Mystic Confluence and Force of Negation up. No real reason to do anything. If uh, kind of throws out a time warp here, I'll probably just counter it and draw two cards. Oh, Mox Ruby, sure. And that's it. All right. Draw Arid Mesa. Let's just go Arid Mesa go here. Still not too, in too much of a hurry here. I don't really want to play a Baleful Strix and have it get... Oh, that I'm going to force of negation for sure. Reckoner Bankbuster would be really annoying <laughs> in, the, in this game. Okay, and then next turn, I will sack this. I think, I think I just get my blue still, because I have all my colors. All right, there's Dark Confidant. Let's just play Odawara and then play Baleful Strix and see what happens. And if it's hard cast Subtlety, I'll probably just go counter and draw two cards. Connor can take a Time Warp, can cast a Pyrokinesis at some point. Not too worried. All right, we're just gonna chill. Chillin's fine with me, too. Pass the turn. Not really getting to use their mana. 
pass again. Okay. Land. Send in the clown. And do I want a dark confidant here? I think so. I think I'll cast dark confidant and <clears throat> mystic confluence something. Yeah, I'll mystic confluence a subtlety. It's fine with me. Or or a pyrokinesis. Depends on what what you're worried about. <clears throat> I could also not Mystic Confluence the Pyrokinesis because I don't really care if Dark Confidant dies. I mean, the Baleful Strix too, but that's fine. I think I, I would more likely to want to counter a Subtlety here. Counter target spell, draw two cards. And then, because Mystic Confluence is getting a, a little bit worse <clears throat> as Connor gets more mana in play. Counter and draw two, or try to. All right. And I guess I'll play a Pirate Spell Bomb too. I'm likely going to get Pyro hit with a Pyrokinesis here. You could take a Time Warp first if you wanted. Oh, of oh, a Braid, sure. So three cards in hand, Time Warp, Pyrokinesis, and now two, two, two additional cards. Yeah, I'm not too scared about all this. Like, obviously I have to watch out with how uh, I play my Lurus here. Let's draw a card. Sack the swamp, or tap the swamp to draw. Hull Breacher. Um, I think I'll mill you. I'm getting low on cards. I have plenty of Luris targets. Yeah, I guess I can't stop that. Mm. Okay, well, I'll dash in a Raghavan then. And see if that how that works out. And I'll leave Baleful Strix back. I don't think attacking with that makes too much sense. Especially not into Time Warp. And then I'll probably play my land and say go. Leave up a Cathar Commando at some point. <clears throat> Get to kill the Mox Ruby or something. I've got three cards in hand, Time Warp and one other. Time Warp, Parakinesis and one other. It was a good mill. Mill the Dismember. Very smart. <laughs> and kind of in an awkward spot here, I would assume. Like, you either let Raghavan hit you or you trade off Hole Breacher. Neither of those sound wonderful. One thing that is kind of annoying is I don't have another way to protect Luris from Pyrokinesis. Oh, we're hitting with Raghavan. Okay. Get a little action. Oh, Wheel of Fortune. Well, I guess I'm not casting that with a whole Breacher in play, but I'm glad that I... Uh, <coughs> I'm glad that I didn't let them draw it. Okay, so now they have Time Warp, but it doesn't really... Time Warp, when you don't have anything in play that you're doing turn by turn, doesn't do that much. Like, if Connor were to attack, cast Time Warp and not attack with Hole Breacher, Time Warp would be basically be zero mana cycling, which you kind of hope for better on, on your expensive card. Like, the opportunity cost of having Time Warp just sitting in your hand for a bunch of turns means that you, you want a higher upside, which the, the card obviously can provide. But, all right, here's Time Warp. Hmm... Don't think I want to kill the Mox Ruby here. I don't really need to do that. I can do that whenever I want. All right. No plays. I don't think I need to play the Cathar Commando. Um, yeah, I'll dash Raghavan and see what's up. Is it Pyrokinesis time? Are we finally doing it? Oh, we're playing Malcolm. Okay. That's fine, I suppose. And I'll just chill. Don't think I need to play Luris here. Cycle miscalculation, sure. So time warp's gone. So it's pyrokinesis and unknowns. And we're just both kind of sitting there. It's a little dangerous because there's a whole breacher in play. I don't love that. Yeah. Is it time to to do some lurising? Let me see. My deck has balance. Yeah, it doesn't have a whole lot of ways. Oh, benevolent bodyguard. That's what I'm drawing to. Okay. I guess I'll just wait. I'll probably play uh, the Cathar Commando now, given that... 
I've, I've bricked off on a few draw steps here. Might as well do some, get some pressure in. All right, Cathartic Commando, draw for the turn, or try to, and hope to draw a Benevolent Bodyguard, at which point I can play Luris. Oh, what is this? Counter target spell, draw a card, okay. That's fine. I need to draw a spell here. Uh, I'm looking to see if I want to Luris. I just really don't. I think I'm going to have a hard time winning without Luris. So I think I'm going to wait. One thing I will probably do is bring in Brain Freeze. This looks like a, a matchup where like a Brain Freeze would just be an incredibly easy way to win here. Draw. Oh, Chromatic Star. I'll play it, but with a whole Breacher in play, I don't want to crack it. The other thing is I'm building up enough uh, card draw effects that maybe going Luris, Pyrite, Spellbomb to kill Hole Breacher would, would actually be pretty profitable. But the problem is I don't have that much left in my deck. Thieving Skydiver, X equals 1. Okay, wow, didn't want to steal a Baleful Strix. All right, I guess I'll give you a treasure because otherwise you get a card. Sure, I mean, that felt like a little bit too clever of a play. Like, just take the Baleful Strix and start attacking me. Uh, but who knows? <laughs> uh, I just don't have enough ways to win if I if I play all these. I don't know. I guess I'll just pass, take two here, and hope to draw a Bodyguard. I think that's just going to be it. Because if I draw a Bodyguard, I can kind of unleash the floodgates where I go like, Bodyguard, Luris. Uh, play Pirate Spellbomb, kill Hole Reacher, and then cast some cantrips and find the last bunch of spells in my deck. That's my plan, at least. Balance is also a way to, to get something done here. Uh, I'm going to play my land, actually. Because what I might end up doing is going is blocking here and then casting Balance. That's a good way to get the Hole Reacher out of, the, out of here as well. Okay, three cards in hand. Bobble. Lush Portico. That portico is lush. Uh, planes in the graveyard. And then cast. I could preordain, actually. Uh, I actually kind of like that. I, I'm going to be able to draw enough cards anyway. I'm not going to draw a card off preordain because of the whole breacher. But I don't really care about giving another treasure. Remand actually seems good. And then I'm going to cast Balance, putting you to one card in hand. I think Burning Preordain to make them discard a card was actually pretty good. And this way you have to keep, like, if Connor wants to keep Pyrokinesis, that's the only card they're keeping. And I guess I lose a land or two, but I'm okay with that. Okay, let's see if, uh, we'll see what, what what's up with this balance here. Days? Okay. Yeah, I'll pay one. Sure, does that make me lose another land? So choose nine lands you control. One, two, three, four. And then sack the rest. Yeah, that's probably fine. Uh, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I get one of my tap lands too. Do I want... I guess I'll probably just take another island. I have four, three planes right now. And one, two, three, four blue sources. A red and a black. I guess looking at my graveyard, I should probably just keep the planes. So I, I lost three lands. Discarded two lands left, kept Pyrokinesis. All right, what's your top card? Top card is Island. Okay, so then I'm going to draw a, a remand off of the, uh, <clears throat> the bobble. And... Connor's going to draw a says Pyrokinesis Island in hand. Just draw a bodyguard. Any bodyguards. Problem is, if I play Luris, he has five, six. He's enough mana to double Pyrokinesis, so Rand doesn't stop anything. Basically, I just need to draw a Benevolent Bodyguard before he draws something too good. And a Counterspell at least doesn't stop me. Oh, there we go. Benevolent Bodyguard. That's who I'm looking for. And then Luris. <clears throat> and then it's going to be Jace Fringe Prodigy, probably. 
Oh, we drew a counter spell. Um, let's remand the Luris. I don't think remand is actually going to be an amazing card most of the time anyway, so. Then I'll play Luris, and I guess no matter what, I, I kind of feel like it's going to get Pyrokinesis this turn, so no reason to play anything, a, a creature, I feel like. I'm just going to play Pirate Spell Bomb, I think, and pass the turn. And then, all right, <clears throat> Connor drew a Memory Lapse, has Island Pyrokinesis in hand, has like kind of like one draw step to draw something good. Okay. Let's see what's got left in our deck. That was a good top deck. I need to fade another removal spell, but it's already used Arc Trail, a Braid, Dismember, has Pyrokinesis in hand. I feel like that's a pretty good amount. Could get Brainstorm locked here if we're, if we're lucky. Petty Theft. Uh, yeah, there it goes. I'm going to... I do have a, a way to win left, which is I have... A, Intrepid Adversary, so I actually feel like I'm in pretty good shape if I draw Intrepid Adversary in the next card or two, because I'll be able to play the two protective creatures. I have Pirate Spell Bomb <clears throat> to kill Brazen Bar or anything else that comes up. All right, well, let's go Benevolent Bodyguard. Mother of Runes. Mother of Runes actually was the other card I was hoping to draw. I kind of forgot about that. All right, pass the turn, and I can play a pretty massive... Uh, Intrepid Adversary soon here. The question now is, do I want to Pirate Spellbomb the Brazen Borrower? I think with a Swords in hand, it's probably fine, too. I'm not going to want to sack it to draw a card. And I'm hoping Connor doesn't have too many more big plays here. Bodyguard and Mother Runes are very good in this matchup. Arc Trail's pretty annoying, Got a, and Pyrokinesis, too. But next turn, I mean, if I draw the... I'll have five white. Yeah, I can make Intrepid Adversary that gives my creatures plus four, plus four, with two ways to protect it. It seems pretty good. And if Connor doesn't have a shuffle effect, at least one of the cards, either in hand or on top of the deck, are is an island. So we'll, we'll see how this turns out. Quite a game, though. This has been a slog. All right, and past the turn here, huh? Okay. That doesn't help much at all. Attack for one. I guess I'll play my island. Don't think it really helps to save it. Definitely bring in Brain Freeze. <laughs> there goes the island. Pass the turn. All right. I need Intrepid Adversary to not be the last card. <clears throat> and obviously, the sooner the better. There we go. Intrepid Adversary. If you've got a Counterspell in hand, I guess congrats. Okay. Let's do this. Pay two. Pay two. Pay two. Pay two, and yeah, I guess I'll pay, pay two. Okay. And <clears throat> attack for six, leaving up Mother of Runes, and this looks like it's got to be pretty good. Takes a pretty good card to, to, to get out of this. I mean, Mother of Runes protects Intrepid Adversary, Benevolent Bodyguard protects whatever I need. Mindstone, okay. Don't mind if I do. Draw your card. I mean, like a time twister or something could go somewhere. Narset, sure. You got some Narset action here. You're actually, in, <laughs> Connor's now at risk of getting decked <laughs> after cycling through these cards. And I think I might have game one. Like I said, Cryptic Command's already gone. Damage-based removal or targeted stuff isn't really going to work. And whew, what a game one. All right, so going into sideboarding, I definitely want this brain freeze. I feel like the way these games go, I could easily win with that. Does that make me want Sensei's top? Portable hole looked pretty bad. It kills Malcolm. That's like the only card I saw. And Glimmerlands seems like it's probably not good enough. I don't think I want Lion's Eye Diamond. And there, otherwise, this looks pretty good. Got, you know, 
they've got a lot of annoying cards, but I, I do too, I suppose. So I think Mother of Runes and Benevolent Bodyguard are going to be pretty key here. All right, time for game two. I would like to reveal Lurus. I don't want to see Brain Freeze in my opening hand. Oh, I do want to see this, though. Turn one, Mother of Runes. Turn two, Dark Confidant. You love to see that. Okay, so let's go... Mm, let's actually start with Cataxian Probe just to even see. What do you got? What do you got? Ponder, Young Pyromancer. Oh, didn't play the Pyromancer turn one because of... Uh, or sorry, didn't play the Ponder turn one because of Young Pyromancer. It makes sense. Okay. And these cards are... My cards are all pretty good against Subtlety too, which is funny. Just because they're so cheap. All right, so now you can Subtlety the Bob if you want. I'm not sure how... How strong that's going to be, but it's coming out. Dark Confidant, Mother Runes, nice little curve. One, two. What a one, two punch. All right. Pass the turn. Connor can potentially attack with the Pyromancer here. You attack with Pyromancer. Oh. Bank Buster? Okay. Hmm. Oh, into Ruby. Wow, nice, nice, nice. Now I get to use the Bank Buster. Okay, there's a subtlety hanging out there. But uh, attacking is kind of funny because if I block and give protection, I could get I could get d demolished. Swords to Plowshares. I like that. Okay, so land. I'm just going to Swords to Plowshares the Pyromancer before any spells get cast. Play a Chromatic Star. Actually, going to sack it for white because... With a whole breacher around, I don't really want to wait wait too long on that. Play a benevolent bodyguard. I'm just gonna draw. Maybe daze me. I don't know. And send with the bob for two. And pass. So we're both drawing an extra card every turn, but mine costs zero mana. I am a little worried about whole breacher, but I think I really didn't want the. Pyromancer making a bunch of tokens here. Balance, huh? Uh, land. Let's cast Council's Judgment. And if you want to use your Bank Buster, you got to use it now. Connor may or may not want to, but I imagine it does. All right. Ooh, into Miscalculation. All right. That's good. And let's go Thought Scour you, because I have enough to bring back with Luris. Hit two lands, no good. And I have a Brain Freeze in my deck, so I want to maximize the chances that I can Brain Freeze. <laughs> okay, the balance isn't looking amazing here, but that's okay. Do have to worry about Subtlety. I have to worry about Hole Breacher now, too. I mean, this, this blue-red deck has a lot of cards I have to play around. Hole Breacher, Pyrokinesis, Arc Trail, Dismember, Subtlety. It's a lot of stuff. Draw. Okay, revealed intrepid adversary. Um, do I want to play intrepid adversary into subtlety? Not really. I can't really attack anymore either. I think I'm going to start by playing preordain and hoping Connor doesn't have a whole breacher in hand. Okay. Whew. Glad that that worked out. All right, and a bobble is good too. I'm gonna bobble you. See what you're drawing. Drawing a time warp. I don't love that. So I don't think playing intrepid adversary sounds very good. I think I'm just gonna pass the turn. I could put Luris into hand, but I kind of want to leave mana up here. Maybe I, maybe I want to just. Hmm, bounce the pilot token. I don't know. Maybe I should have. I don't like revealing that I don't have any plays. Well, we'll see what pawn. So Connor has ponder in hand still. We also do know that. Yeah, I should have bounced the token actually though. I'll go to nine here, I suppose. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna go to nine. And then if if he casts a time warp, I'll get the token out of here but I think I should I think I should have just done that on my end of turn because this this play was just so scripted okay and what is this 
Oh, Malcolm. Yeah, all right. I don't love that. Let's see. Intrepid Adversary could be good, but Subtlety is going to get me pretty good. I think what I might do is cast Baleful Strix, and if that resolves, great. And if it doesn't, I go Adversary for two. That seems like a decent plan. The Mox was pretty good to get turn three Bank Buster Activate going. No plays, including Ponder. Interesting. All right. Bob revealed Ragavan. Land. Mm, I have six mana. I guess I could start by dashing Ragavan. Yeah, that's probably solid. I assume I'm getting subtletyed. Oh, I'm not getting subtletyed. Okay. Well, I'm going to attack with everything then. Because I think if you play, try to want to play subtlety and block, I don't mind that too much. And if I get to hit with Ragavan, that opens up some possibilities too. So this seems like this seems like good. I think I should be at four life higher. Hopefully that doesn't cost me. I think it might though. Okay, we're just casting subtlety, sure. What's funny is Connor might crew the bank buster. Oh. Gonna block Ragavan. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it pro blue. I think I'm fine doing that. Because I still have the Benevolent Bodyguard here. I don't want to give up too much ground. Are we going to abrade something? Abrade the Benevolent Bodyguard, okay. Well, I don't really like where we're at here, but I will try my best. All right, Baleful Strix, draw, pass the turn. <clears throat> there is a chance I could pull off some kind of balance sort of deal. Maybe I should have just let Raghavan die, honestly. Because I think having Mother Runes up to protect Baleful Strix probably was more important. But I also think this game, I was going to struggle either way. The combination of Bankbuster subtlety and playing at instant speed has made my life kind of difficult. Because this deck doesn't close out super fast, especially in the face of a subtlety. I guess... What could be okay, it's possible here, is if I get, like, Pyrokinesis, and then I can land a nice balance. Yeah. Oh, Pyrokinesis didn't kill the Bob. All right, all right. But did it before attacking with this, now I have a Flash creature. Okay, I guess had to kill the bank or the Baleful Strix anyway. Okay. Dead and going to game three. So, looking at this, maybe I do want Portable Hole for Bank Buster, Malcolm, and a Mox. Could be okay. Is it possible I don't want Chromatic Star because of... Uh, maybe I just don't want Balance. It's, oh, Portable Hole also hits the Young Pyromancer. Yeah, I think Balance is mostly going to be kind of weak. I'm just going to have more creatures in play most of the time. So I think I'll try this. All right, uh, I'm on the play. I mean, I had a pretty good hand, and I just got crushed last game. This is also pretty good. I'll keep this and start with a probe. Let's see how bad this is for me. <laughs> Ancestral Recall, too. Six lands Ancestral. Go you, I guess. Uh, let's just go turn one Preordain. I like Mother of Runes. I actually don't mind Mountain. I think I have one red card. Hmm. I'm going to put Mountain on the bottom. Because I, it, my Aaron Mesa is probably getting Scrubland, but I just don't really want to uh, keep, keep another land on top. This does not seem like the jam. All right, yeah, you can Ancestral. I mean, I would keep that hand too, for sure. Uh, Let's go, I think, Benevolent Bodyguard first. And then next turn, I can go Baleful Strix plus Mother of Runes. I, I really want to protect Mother of Runes as best I can. All right, you got the Bank Buster. Let's see if I can draw my Portable Hole here or Cathar Commando. I'm glad I didn't keep the land on top. Wow. All right. Let's get a Scrub Land. Let's play Mother of Runes first. I don't want this one getting dazed. Baleful Strix, I can live with that. Okay, draw. And hit for one. All right. 
not the best, but not the worst. I have my protection creatures out. That that is helpful. I'll probably just put Luris into hand if assuming Connor just doesn't do anything. He's got Shatter Skull Smashing, I can remember that. And a bunch of lands. Wow, he had Ancestral in deck and didn't draw it in that game one. <laughs> That's funny. We are battling against an Ancestral and a Mox here. Did you keep the cards? Probably did. Yeah, of course, didn't shuffle. All right, let's get a Portable Hole, Cathar Commando. Any of those things would be great, just not lands. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess I'll hit for two. And I'll put Luris into hand because it seems like this is a good opportunity to do so. Pass the turn. Draw off Bankbuster. Don't draw Mox, please. All right, now I have to discard. That's that's at least something. Discarding a land here. All right, can we just draw a spell, please? Oh, swords. Okay, I don't mind that. I'm just going to hit with these two and pass the turn. And no real reason to play Luris here. I'll just leave up Force of Negation. And really would like to draw an instant speed play. I'm getting completely wrecked by this bank buster. But, well, my preordain and probe did not find as many spells as I was hoping. I Really, any creature to play, or a bobble to make Luris a little better, would be really nice to, to pick up here. Okay. Discarding, sure. And I guess I'm probably just going to... Oh, that's nice. Okay. Land. Pirate spell bomb. Discarding a bone horde dragon. Wild. Okay. Uh, let's just send with nothing because Bank Buster is going to draw. And the pilot token is going to maybe be able to crew Bank Buster and attack. Hmm. Okay, there's the mocks. So you don't have to discard this turn, I guess, but let's see what you got. I wouldn't mind a little fight over Mother of Runes and Benevolent Bodyguard. That would be kind of nice. You're going to start with an Arc Trail or something here? No, you're just going to pass and say go. Okay, I will do the same. Land. I don't really want to cast Council's Judgment here. Let's just pass the turn. Remember, I have Brain Freeze in my deck. So at some point, if I draw Brain Freeze, I can set up a turn where it's like we both just play a bunch of spells and then Brain Freeze happens. I'm just going to wait. I kind of feel like, especially if I draw a Red Source, this Pirate Spell Bomb could be pretty good at killing a, a Hole Breacher. So I'm just going to chill here. If Connor ha would have to discard here after discarding two lands, that would be really funny. I guess it did matter. All right. Arc Trail, targeting these two. Um, I think I'm going to Benevolent Bodyguard the Mother of Runes. Okay, give it Pro Red. All right. We traded Arc Trail for Benevolent Bodyguard. You got me. Draw. Odawara. That's another one I think I should just hold in hand. I'm probably going to Odawara the pilot token at some point here. What is this? Is this Brazen Bar? Oh, Dismember on Mother of Runes. All right, I'll give it pro black, I guess. Okay. And I assume we're going to have a bit of a fight here. What is this? For three mana. And will I force of negation it? Probably. The one thing that is a little annoying is playing the land would have let me go force of negation, remand my own force of negation, force of negation. So that would have been a nice option to have, but we aren't there. Oh, this, this is the Shatter Skull smashing. I think I will force of negation that. Seems like a decent play place to do this. I'm a little tempted at some point to crack this pirate spell bomb. <laughs> Memory lapse on the force of negation. Um, let's go 
remand on the force of negation and i'm fine not recasting it it's basically i'm using remand to draw a force of negation and and a, and another spell okay and then shatter skull smashing happens that's fine with me and then i'm going to go luris replay benevolent bodyguard with a counter spell up okay and then this bank buster is hitting for some damage here uh sure Thought scout are you if i can find this brain freeze i'll be really happy okay whole breacher i was kind of hoping that that might happen because i get to swords it and hopefully days is not okay good no days I, I got narset wheel nice i like that okay um let's play the plateau let's go luris you gonna subtlety me <clears throat> okay no subtlety and benevolent bodyguard and then bodyguard will protect the luris and i have force negation up and i think i'll take another hit from this bank buster if i need to because luris getting to attack back with lifelink will more than make up for that all right <clears throat> this this game went from i think being pretty tough to being pretty manageable i mean we'll see connor still has pyrokinesis in deck has gone through dismember arc trail shatter skull smashing still has a still has gold span um sure okay crew that <clears throat> let's go odawara the gold span i think is going to be my play here because it's going to be pretty hard to play red spells. And now I'm going to take four. And I think end of turn, I'll just pirate spell bomb the, the pilot token to make it so the, the bank buster is less of a threat. And then I get to attack. I guess this brain freeze isn't really going to come into play here, though. It, it really could have. Um, now I get to play something out of my graveyard. It's got to be Baleful Strix, right? Because that stops the Goldspan Dragon. And I don't need Mother of Runes when I have Benevolent Bodyguard plus Force of Negation. I don't need it so badly, at least. So I think playing Baleful Strix out of the out of the bin is going to be good. You can pitch cast Subtlety, I guess. I would accept that. I'd probably just put it on top. Pitching Cryptic Command. Wow. Okay, I mean, this is a last-ditch effort of some kind to, to kill me, I suppose. Uh, I will put Baleful Strix on top. That goes away, land, attack for four, and go up to 12. I'm not really going to get hit for eight next turn because the bank buster can't be crew. You can hit me with the dragon, and then I'll just uh, counsel's judgment the dragon. Four, subtlety pitching cryptic. I don't think that's the way to win this game. But I also think I've maneuvered myself into a good spot. This was, a, I think, a game that was... Certainly a lot of stuff going on. Uh, sure, Pyromancer doesn't worry me too much. Okay, draw Baleful Strix. Still play it, I think. Especially since drawing a card here could be good. Like, if I draw Brain Freeze here, I could potentially get out. Oh, I guess playing the land first actually ended up being kind of bad. Council's Judgment, Exile Goldspan Dragon. And I think I'm just going to pass the turn here. I don't need to attack with Luris. In fact, attacking with Luris would, I think, be crazy bad because if Connor played a spell, it could then crew the bank buster, and that would be a disaster for me. All right. But I'll be able to Luris soon enough here. And I'm not like I'm getting attacked back because I have this Baleful Strix. And Force Negation still kind of protecting me. And... At any point, Brain Freeze is pretty close to lethal. Oh, what is this? I'm going to have to force this out. Thieving Skydiver X equals 2. Hmm. Okay. Sure. You can have a Baleful Strix, I guess. Crew Bank Buster in attack. Then I attack back with Luris. Okay. Yeah, I go to four here. I still have a counter spell in hand for whatever the last play is. 
Bank but or uh, Skydiver was good though. That was that was a pretty good one. All right, Lau. I think I'm just gonna go Pyrite Spell Bomb. Kill the thieving skydiver. Or attempt to. And attack. I'm gonna go up to seven. Yeah, I guess I'll leave the bodyguard back because I don't really care about getting in an extra couple points of damage here. Extra one point of damage here. And then I can play Jason Lush Portico. And I'll still have Force of Negation up. Oh, what is this? Is this the Pyrokinesis making a token? Yeah, um, yeah, I will counter the pyrokinesis at this point. And then I go Jace, Lush Portico. Okay, swamp into the graveyard. All right, pass the turn. <sighs> Got to be a massive favorite here, I would imagine. Cycle miscalc, sure. I mean... I've got, okay, you're crewing the bank buster. What's in my graveyard? Pirate spell bomb, mother runes. I'm just looking, I think I'm just gonna take it and go to two here. I just feel like I feel like chumping with Jace is actually not the way to, to win this game. All right, I'm going to attack with uh, Luris here. Okay, I go back up to five. I like that. Oh, actually, I guess I should have Jace first in case I drew Intrepid Adversary, or in this case, Luminarch. Yeah, that was a mistake. Um, minus three. I'm going to Council's Judgment here. Cast Council's Judgment. I will exile the bank buster and then play pirate spell bomb to kill the pyromancer and then play my post combat luminarch aspirant <laughs> and I've got to be in pretty good shape at this point I'm at five now going to four off baleful strix wheel of fortune doesn't kill me I guess wheel of fortune's gone actually and Need like a big haste flyer or something to get the job done. Next turn. I guess I don't have lethal if both of these creatures stay back, but it's pretty close. Mm. Oh, well. Trepid Adversary's gotta gotta pretty much do it. Let's cast Pirate Spellbomb first to see if uh see if that resolves. Then cast Intrepid Adversary, and then we're gonna pay some some extra mana into the adversary and whew, what a grind but we got there and this is why i love Luris decks also this deck was this was a sick game i feel like uh i'll pop myself on the back because i think when i, I kind of got maneuvered this game into a very winnable spot game one also that would have been really easy to lose but that's one and oh on to the next round all right time for round two battle against troll ascetic on like a mid-range green thing with a little bit of reanimation oh Oh, baby. Turn one, Raghavan. Turn two, Portable Hole or Pirate Spell Bomb to, to push it through. He doesn't have a turn on removal spell. I mean, this is why you put Raghavan in your deck. It's actually like kind of annoying where it's like, if Raghavan's in your opening hand, you sometimes just win the game just straight up. So it, it is not... Uh, it is a very high variance card, let's just say that. All right, Troll is also kept. And I am going to play a turn on Raghavan, which is actually really funny too because... My deck does, has three ways to play a turn one Raghavan, but here we are with the best of them. Plateau is awesome. What are you going to do about this? Especially since if you don't have removal, I get to go portable hole your blocker if that's what you're trying to do. But we'll see. We'll see. And if, if I get one hit in and I have remand up, troll is done. Go back to being under the bridge or whatever. Well, actually, this is troll ascetic. Just got a 3-2 hex proof. And regeneration. It was a good card back in the day. Oh, Troll's playing a different deck than I thought. Well, Force of Will, that, you know, what, what can you do? I got my two for one, pitching a Mystical Tutor. Okay. I must have looked at the wrong screenshots. It looks like Troll's on more of a reanimator deck. Hmm. 
more of a blue black reanimator deck even gotcha 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 okay i was uh misinformed well i at least got a got a force of will there but uh this game looks a lot less good now that uh my ragavan instant win is is done i did i do i do have to kind of uh settle for it being a one mana two for one okay let's go graveyard Whew, almost top didn't want that. Pirate spell bomb. Pass the turn. What are you so scared of me casting portable hole on? Uh, I guess I'll find out actually. Um, oh, kept a cheeky one lander with Lazav and whatnot. Okay, land. Let's put Luris into my grip here. Pass the turn. I guess next turn I'm going to go... Luris Raghavan, but we'll see what Troll does. Assuming Troll has drawn a land, goes land Lazav, <clears throat> and then I go Luris replay Raghavan, or Luris just portable hold Lazav. Yeah, all right, just swamp. So deciding whether or not to do anything like that. All right, I guess I will trade losing Luris here. I wouldn't normally do, do this, but I think uh, I think this is actually going to work out fine, because now Troll gets to k take my reanimate or my remand and my Luris with a collective brutality, but I get to start hitting with Ragavan, so I, I should be able to put together a way to win based on that. Collective brutality down and counterspell down. All right, and I get to hit, and those are those four cards I'm playing against. All right, that seems winnable to me. Let's hit. What do you got? Oh, Deep Cavern Bat. That is sick. All right. I will play Deep Cavern Bat then. And whew, up a game. All right. Well, you know, in the end, Raghavan did eventually get there. I do not want Brain Freeze here. I don't think I want LED. I could see playing LED in like a matchup that's faster, but I think I think we're good the way we are. I, I do like a lot of my game against Reanimate with Force of Negation, Swords to Plowshares, Balance. These are, these are some good answers. All right, time for game two. I will once again be presenting Luris as my companion. <laughs> All right, and what do we got? A very solid hand. Mother Runes into Cathar Commando. Potentially Intrepid Adversary. It'll kind of depend on what we see. But any hand that starts with Mother Runes is awesome. All right, and even a Mishra's Bobble. Love that. Pass Upkeep Bobble. And the reason I do it on upkeep, oh, Tidebinder is even a great one to know about. Uh, I don't want the card in my hand right now in case of a discard effect, and I do want uh, to draw the card by next turn. Oh, now I can just leave up Remand and Cathar Commando. Seems like a pretty good play to me. Troll has no plays yet. Can Tishana's Tidebinder my Mother of Runes, or at least I have to keep that in mind? End of turn, I'm throwing out Cathar Commando here, leaving up Remand, and I, I just love Luris decks. All right. Cathar Commando, that is. And then next turn, I can have Thought Scour and Remand up, even. And here, I'll be Thought Scouring myself for sure. Oh, getting Counterspelled? Sure. With that, I don't mind too much. Draw Island. I'll just pass the turn here. I don't really feel a need to do anything else i'll get back my luris at some point or put it into hand at some point but for right now i'm just going to be chilling we can do like an overgrown tomb here oh and dotha triumph yeah basically land go all right thought scour me i assume that's fine milled chromatic star and pirate spell i'm actually that's not terrible uh Let's go Intrepid Adversary, and then I'm just not going to pay the cost. I don't think I need to do that. Oh, we're getting Tishana's Tidebinder? Nice. All right, I, I, I will accept that. That'll make it a lot easier for me to use this Mother of Runes. So now I have a 3-1 with no lifelink, but that's okay. And then... Trolls on five cards in hand. I guess now because it doesn't have lifelink, the race is not quite as good, but I think it's still going to be okay. Ooh, 
what do we got here? Collective brutality. What's the mode? I think it's just they discard. Uh, yeah, I'll remand it. And hopefully d don't draw something that gets hit by collective brutality, I guess. No, it looks like we're just opening the door for an Oko. Sure. That's acceptable. We'll make a food. I guess I will attack Oko for three here. Balance is kind of interesting. It's not looking amazing, but at some point it could do something. All right, let's attack Oko. Oh, I guess I actually should have played the... Oh. Blocking? Okay, I'll, I'll give this pro blue. I guess I should have played Baleful Strix first in case I drew a Council's Judgment, but I suppose I can't actually cast Council's Judgment this turn. <laughs> Dark Confidant, all right, I'll play Lush Portico, I think. I kind of don't want to put Luris, oh, I'll put that in the graveyard, into hand yet because of balance. I, I think there's a chance I'm going to want to cast some kind of balance here. Could switch the food token to my Mother of Runes, but that doesn't sound all that powerful. Uh, Going to get Collective brutality. probably my Mother of Runes. And I guess my balance is going away too. Maybe that's a reason to put Luris into hand. Okay, what's getting discarded? An Echo of Eons. Okay. Yeah, you got to take balance. It's the only target. Can make the food token into a 3-3, and then I can't really attack Oko for very much. Yeah, I think I should have just put Luris into hand. Though, I guess it actually might work out better if Troll's casting Echo of Eons here. <laughs> that's kind of funny. Yeah, we'll have to see. I'm really glad I took that Benevolent Bodyguard. That basically won me the first match, which was nice. All right, we swapped Baleful Strix. Huh. Interesting. Um, yeah, I guess it's actually fine to trade trade these off. I think it's not going to be better to, to wait. And then I'm just going to play my two idiots. Play Dark Confidant. Play Scholar and pass the turn. And then now I can in one fell swoop Luris if I want. Oh, we're entombing. That could be bad news. I mean, we've done some good card trading here, but if Troll has a way to reanimate this Gristlebrand, then we are now in a lot of trouble. I'm hoping that's not the case, though. Oh, Echo Vians? Sure. I don't mind that. I just drew my graveyard. I drew all the all five five of these cards are in my graveyard. I was really hoping to draw Remand. I think that was like the number one card I wanted to see, but we'll see what Trolls got here. Tishana's Tidebinder for Red Art Confidant. Wow. <laughs> Unfortunately, Scholar doesn't put anything directly into play here. I guess I am gonna sack the food token in a turn, because I don't really see Well. I'm kind of leaving up remand if I if I don't. Like I'm threatening to leave up remand. Preacher of the Schism. Okay. I guess I'll do it now. All right. Let's flip something good. Mystic Confluence and Ragavan. I see. Mm. I mean, I can bounce the Preacher and draw two. I mean, that sounds kind of nice. Here, let's go Bobble. I'm going to bounce this and draw two cards, and then that way I can kill Oko. And then play Mother Runes and I guess Pirate Spellbomb or Chromatic Star. Uh, I guess I'll just play the Pirate Spellbomb. <coughs> and pass the turn. Obviously, uh, Troll can make a big play here, but I'm. Reasonably ahead on board, ahead on life. It's like six lands, I have seven lands. I have three creatures in play, and I have still pretty full grip of cards. So I'm kind of liking where we're at. Obviously, like, Entuma, Gristlebrand, and Reanimated is just like a big play out of nowhere. But kind of sad that I drew this preordain. Now it's just going to get Collective brutality for no gain. When I'm sure that he's kicking it here. But I also have Mother of Runes and Dark Confidant. They're both good if they survive a turn here. 
Don't know which one Troll is planning on killing. Oh, look at that. Shadow Grange Archfiend paying eight life. I guess I'll sack the Scholar. Then Mother of Runes goes down. And so does Preordain. Ah, pretty neat play. All right, Bobble you. Jace, don't love that. I guess I have a Raghavan. All right, let's flip with Bob. Any swords to plowshares? Balance. Um, Luris, play Luris. Nah, I don't have enough to pyrite. Get Luris, play Luris, pyrite, you know, do all that. I can trade with the Shadow Grange by attacking here. Let's go Baleful Strix first because there's some draws I could hit that would be pretty good. Oh, Odawara is one of them. Because now I can go... This costs seven to cast. Well, how much do I care about Jace is actually the real question. Because I can Odawara the Shadow Grange, play Raghavan, attack. I won't get to play the Jace. And then next turn, Troll goes hard cast Shadow Grange. Eat your Dark Confidant. And then I have enough mana to do the whole Luris thing. Yeah, I guess that is kind of nice. Hold on, let's let's see if Raghavan is... Oh, yeah, and if Raghavan... This is even better, because now I can actually spend one less mana to Odawara here, which is huge. All right. Because now I can Odawara for three mana and attack... Okay, yeah, it's going to just get into life. I didn't think he had anything. All right, attack with these... Get Jace. I just think Jace would be really annoying for me to deal with, so I'm trying to <laughs> not have to fight it. And then play Chromatic Star, and then pass the turn. Raghavan comes back. <laughs> Troll may have a different play, but I think hard casting Shadow Grange is a pretty reasonable play, at the very least. Because it would kill my Dark Confidant, which is drawing me an extra card every turn. But we'll see. And then next turn, I could go Luris, cast Luris, sack possible one play. Yeah, I have enough to do the whole Luris gambit if I really want to, but it might be something different here. Preacher, okay. And Lazav. Okay, that's not too bad. Mm -hmm. Benevolent Bodyguard and Portable Hole. Oof. All right, let's go Portable Hole. Let's get the Lazav out of here. Oh, Tishana's Tidebinder. Um, let's get a red for my chromatic star. Maybe I'll draw a remand. Thought scour. Do I want to thought scour myself or not? I kind of don't want to. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't even necessarily need to pyrite right here. Let's put, I think it's time for Luris is what it is. Luris into hand. Play Luris. Actually, hold on. I think I'll cast the Raghavan. Oh, I already played the Luris using the red, whatever. Uh, play Luris. Play Mother of Runes. And play Benevolent Bodyguard. I guess I should have played the Bodyguard before Lars, but whatever. All right, and then pass. No reason to use the treasure to play Raghavan or anything like that. And, oh, this just plays into Shadow Grange Archfiend. Right. I, like, kind of forgot that that's what the last card was. Okay. Well, I shouldn't have done that then. That was, uh, that was an error. But I think this game's still pretty winnable. Oh. We're not just hard casting it? Okay. Well, I guess I guess I like that. Okay. What are we gonna Oh, we're gonna Lazav the Gristle brand. Mm. Okay, I don't know that that's actually gonna work fantastically. Cause I'm gonna put Baleful Strix on that. And Put Luris on Tidebinder, Benevolent Bodyguard on the Preacher. No, no, I have to use the 
Feature. Um, at 22, I have a Bob in play. I have a Pyrite at Spellbomb, though. Yeah, I think I'll just block like that, and I'll take five. That'll be fine. Because you can turn into Gristlebrand, but I, I, you don't get any life. Okay, let's Pirate Spellbomb. The Tidebinder here. Okay, that turns into a Gristlebrand. Oh, I guess I should have blocked with Benevolent Bodyguard because it was kind of a forced play. In response, I'll give the Baleful Strix pro black and hope that a uh, troll does not have a way to bounce. No, even bouncing the Baleful Strix doesn't do it. All right. Yeah, I think this is going to be a tough one for seven cards is good, but you're at four life now. That's not going to keep you alive. I could have taken two less damage by block with Bodyguard, but I don't think that's going to come down to that so much. <clears throat> and then now I've got a bunch of attackers. I also can replay Pirate Spellbomb and or Dash Raghavan, though I suppose I can't cast Pirate Spellbomb and Dash Raghavan, or I can't activate them both. I don't have enough red because my star is gone. But if I hit with Raghavan, I could then post-combat use the Spellbomb. Well, we'll see what Troll has. I've got a lot of things in play, so kind of has to deal with all of them. <laughs> Not every single one, but a lot of them. At the very least, the Luris. And then Raghavan. Attack, attack. Oh, you know, if the if Troll kills the Luris, I don't technically have lethal. Because Raghavan gets dashed. And then Block Dark Confidant, take three, go to one. Go to two even with Vampire Token. All right, no plays though. Okay. Are we talking, um, oh, we're gonna, well, you can't Madness that, you don't have enough life. All right, a flip with Bob. If I draw a Counterspell, it also just ends the game. And I have a bunch of those in my deck, so, I mean, I guess I have two left. Two lands. And it just enters the battlefield. Hmm. But if you were going to put that... Oh, I guess Corpse Dancing that could be a pretty big beat. Let's see. But you would have maybe done that on upkeep? What am I going to put into play here? I kind of think it's just Pirate Spellbomb. It could also be Benevolent Bodyguard. No, it's probably just Pirate Spellbomb. And if Troll goes Corpse Dance, I think what I'm going to do in response is try to cast Thought Scour on Troll and, and Mill. All right, I'll just attack with these, I guess. Dark Ritual, okay. What are we doing with this Dark Ritual? Is it Corpse Dance? All right, so let's Corpse Dance, Thought Scour, you. Mill a creature, please? No? Uh, okay. And so this enters the battlefield. I'm going to sack this, and they're going to gain three. I'm just deciding if I think, I think cracking the spell bomb to draw a card. Yeah, that doesn't do it either. Okay. Yeah, and I guess just block. Block, block. Well, that was tough. Needed to find Force Negation or Remand to try to win that. And then here, I can't save the Bob, so I think I'm just going to let it die. Troll goes to eight. I guess I can Swords the Preacher. What a comeback. All right. Cast a Raghavan. Pass the turn. Okay, and so then the top card now is a Lazav. If Troll were to Corpse Dance. Whew, what a game. Uh, yeah, I guess I really just needed to find one of my counters. I had two of them. The either one would have won me the game. Now it's going to be tricky because I don't have a Lurus anymore. And I don't really have many ways to win, I guess. I have an Intrepid Adversary in my deck still. If I found that, that could do something. 
Uh, if you go to attack, I'm just going to Swords to Plowshares, the Preacher, beginning a combat, I think is my plan. Corpse Dance Lazav, can Lazav down something? I'm not sure what that even does. Inquisition, all right, Swords the Preacher. And lose the balance again. Second time it's been discarded. <laughs> my hand has ended up, after drawing all those cards, ended up being nothing, which is kind of a beat. And But I'm not sure what else I'm supposed to do here. I guess I could have attacked the Bragavan, but that I don't think would have done much either. And I think Thought Scourer to try to hit any other creature was a, was a good play. All right, in Tomb, sure. So we're going to get Corpse Danced here into Kite Sail Larcenist. Okay. So I guess you probably have another removal spell on top of that, is my assumption. Yep, here comes the Kite Sail Larcenist. The one thing this deck's missing, by the way, is I would have loved a, a Kolagon's Command or an Unearth or basically any way to get Luris back, if, if I could. Steam Core Scholar. Should I sign in Brain Freeze again? I kind of feel like I should, the way these games are going. That's down to three cards in hand, seven cards in deck. <laughs> okay. I mean, his turn was about as weak as I could possibly imagine. I, I kind of feel like I'm fine here now. I'm going to get to hit with Ragavan. All right, I'll give this pro blue. I mean, I guess that thing's going away to end of turn anyway, so maybe I didn't even need to, but it kind of taps the Mother Rune Nest down anyway, so... All right, I mean, I, I kind of feel like if I still draw Force of Negation, I can win. Oh, that, that probably just wins me the game. Trepid Adversary. One. Yep. All right, never mind. We're 2-0. and oh. <laughs> uh, Force of Negation would have been good, too. I, I was going to grind through all his cards, as Luris does, and it's time for round three. All right, time for round three, playing against Will, X-Whale, and uh, he's on a uh, Jeskai Academy sort of deck, and <laughs> I'm on a Raghavan sort of deck. This is the hand I had against uh, Troll, but let's see if this one actually resolves in the way I was hoping, though. Ended up winning that game with Raghavan anyway, after it got Force of Willed. And if these, you know, I feel like if you added up all the Luris videos, and I'm actually going to drop the top five Luris videos uh, relatively soon here, my records with the Luris deck is just always so good, and this is why I was, I was willing to throw away a couple cards to take Luris early, because you just end up with such a good long game deck, and uh, I think this draft has probably demonstrated that. All right, let's start with Probe, see how badly Will's going to lose to Luris, or uh, Ragavan. Oh, really badly is what it looks like. So let's go Plateau into Ragavan. No answers at the moment, and no answer until turn two. Which means one Raghavan hit plus getting it hit by Winds of Abandon. Oh yeah, and Bobble doesn't matter. What am I showing you? A Portable Hole. That's probably the worst card for me to show. Maybe Odawara is slightly worse. But, I mean, what, what, is, what is Will going to do here? Just going to play land and say go. I mean, getting one Raghavan hit and then having it hit by Winds of Abandon is totally fine. Okay. See if I can hit a spell to play. That'd be sick, too. Oh, Basalt Monolith. Yeah, that's one option. The other option, though... Yeah, no, that's that's going to be way worse. Let's just go Plains Benevolent Bodyguard. So that Winds of Abandon doesn't do anything. I don't need to play this Basalt Monolith, though. It's actually kind of nice to just exile it. <laughs> Now Winds is blocked, and then because Will knows about the portable hole, the Stoneforge is not that appealing of a play. And this is just going to be one of those games where Raghavan just runs rampant. So I do like that. All right, here's the Spider Bluff and Winds of Abandoned Raghavan. I'll give it pro white. And I just have to win before this upheaval hits, which shouldn't be too hard, I wouldn't imagine. All right, I'm just going to not look at that for now. And what, I didn't hit anything. Let's go land. Put Luris into hand here. Now it's time. Luris and then replay Benevolent Bodyguard is kind of going to be the plan. Let's see. You got Stoneforge Mystic. Sure. Getting 
something large? We will find out. Pretty far away from upheavaling is what it appears. Our sacred foundry was the was the draw. All right. Well, pretty clearly I want a portable hole here. I could swords, because swords, portable hole can hit Jite, but I think swords can also stop Jite, and I'd rather have swords for a bigger play. All right, I must have hit a lot of land, yeah. Land, Luris, and I have all these treasures built up, so just play this. And the funny thing is I can actually Odawara here because I have a Luris and a Raghavan in play, which could come in handy if Will has a Wrath. Urza. All right. Uh, sure. I'm going to Swords it, but I didn't really want to sack a treasure if I didn't need to, you know. Swords to Plowshares, the Urza. Yeah. And I think I'm just going to Odawara the Construct here. Oh, actually, I should have just sacked a treasure. It was probably greedy to do it this way because I would then be able to maybe play Lush Portico and and, and try to mill a card to play into my graveyard. Uh, hit Tiller and Academy, <laughs> sure. All right, pass the turn. I mean, obviously we're still in great shape, but if my top card was a play for Luris, then that, that seems like free value, and giving up a treasure clearly wasn't worth that. That was, that was not a good play. Will's getting close to being able to upheaval here. But upheaval no plays after is not really the way to win. Still has island upheaval GT and one unknown only in hand. <laughs> Do you leave the card on top? There's a Raghavan, so yeah, I milled the Emery. I guess it didn't want me to... Oh yeah, me hitting Emery would actually be pretty good. Balance, huh? Well, that's probably not a card I'm casting here. In fact, I'm going to side the balance out. Ooh, what do we got? The Wandering Emperor, okay. Put a creature into play. Okay, I guess I have to let that happen. Block Raghavan. Oh, block Luris. No, you could block Raghavan, probably. I could sack the Bodyguard, but that doesn't really help much. I just replay the Raghavan instead. I think that's better. All right, let's go Lush Portico. Uh, all right, well, worked out fine, I suppose. And I'll cast... Actually, I think I will dash the Raghavan. Because I have so much mana that... I think I'd rather just have the Raghavan in hand in case of a Wrath or something. That seems better. Wandering Emperor. Can't do too much here. You can minus two on Luris, but that doesn't really help much. All right, you're going to play a Samurai. And then the last three cards are Upheaval Jite. And then go Jite Equip. And you're at five. Okay. Mm, this looks like I win, actually. Because I go Bodyguard, give Luris Pro White, replay Bodyguard, dash Raghavan. So it's dash. Pro White. Play Bodyguard. Pro White. And then attack for five. All right. It took a little, a little finagling, but... uh. That worked out just fine. And yeah, balance looks pretty bad. I'll probably bring in Brain Freeze. I feel like everyone I play against just is going to go through most of their deck. So I think just Brain Freeze could be good here if, against an Academy deck that just like plays 20 cards. So I think I'm going to try that. Let's get to game two. All right. Playing for the 3-0 here. Reveal Luris and... I like this hand. This is a... I'm on the double draw because I'm on the draw and I have Thought Scour. I have force if I want, and my white cards are really good. Plus, if I go Scholar, that can catch me up really nicely. Also, if I just draw a Planes off the top, turn on Mother Runes, turn two Scholars, just a fantastic start. And Force of Negation gives me something to do as well. Will mold five here? That's going to be tough. I, I mean, I could still lose this game if I just Brick on land, Thought Scour, Brick on land, and so on and so forth, but I don't think that's too likely. Let's go land... And let's just pass. I don't think I need a thought, thought scour right now. I'm not that worried about it getting countered. Lion Sash. Sure. I'm still going to thought scour myself, I think. I milled two, two lands. Okay. Not ideal. Okay. Probe you. 
All right, I drew a land, and I'm seeing Bobble Academy Urza. Those are your last three cards? Okay, well, let's go Portable Hole then. Get the Lion Sash. This will slow down the, the Urza by at least a turn, unless he draws another zero. Well, and then next turn, land would still be good, but I would also be fine just playing a Scholar or potentially Mother of Runes. I can Swords the Urza. Okay, there's the Bobble Academy. And pass. All right, Urza in hand. Let's just play Scholar in a, in a rare, the rare time when I don't want to get greedy. I think just playing this is better because this guarantees red mana next turn for Raghavan, which is really nice. Will has Academy and Urza. All right. Urza is in. Oh, and, and one more play. Mana Vault. Okay. That's not too bad. Let's go... Let's see. If you put it in the battlefield tapped... So, oh, I would have drawn a land. All right. Let's remove a counter. Let's go get my plateau. Uh, put plateau onto the battlefield. No. Play my plateau. Swords the Urza. And I'm going to play Mother of Runes. No reason to play Raghavan. In fact, I kind of want them to attack me and then pass. I might have to burn this Mystic Confluence. Because I think the bobble is going to get cracked here. Showed Force of Negation, of course. <laughs> the only card that mattered. Um, I, revealing Mystic Confluence and Raghavan. I mean, they all kind of mattered, I, I suppose. Uh, but unless Will has a good play this turn, I don't have to use it. This could also be a creature, in which case I wouldn't get to. Oh, Mystic Forge? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll use it. Don't think I can afford not to. Hit. Okay, great. Now I get to Raghavan. I won't crack the spell bomb because I, I want to spell bomb the construct. Oh, well, this worked out just fine. Raghavan, attack for three. Keep up Mother of Runes. See what I hit off Raghavizi here. Nothing, a Spire Bluff Canal, and then kill the Construct before you have a chance to play like the Blue Red Artifact Land or something. All right, Raghavan comes back, and then now I'm very close to getting Luris going here. And opponent's on just two cards. Uh-oh, tapping Mana Vault. Cauldra Complete, okay. Okay. Uh, first Strike Haste, Indestructible Trample, but it does tap to attack. And I can block with Mother of Runes. Yeah, so I can take one less damage here. Mm, I don't have a good answer to that right now. I guess Council's Judgment in is my best remaining answer. I think attacking probably makes sense. I don't know. You're not really going to win the game by not attacking. Block. And give my Mother of Runes pro black. Take four. Because if, if they didn't if Will didn't attack, I would just play Rago dash Ragavon and give it protection from black and attack with with it. So Okay, well I will start by dashing Ragavon here. Attack for three. Maybe I'll hit something to play too. That'd be sweet. Alright, what do we got? No. And let's go Baleful Strix and draw. <laughs> no, I'll still play the swamp and then put Luris into hand. And now I actually can just beat Cauldra in a fight because I can block with Baleful Strix, give it pro black, and then, uh, oh, I guess it's indestructible. So never mind. There's no beating Cauldra in a fight, really. But I'm also not that worried. I feel like I'm not losing this race. Uh, I'm just going to tap Mother Runes to save a point of damage. I don't know if one of Will's two cards is Winds of Abandon and he wants to Winds of Abandon my Mother Runes. That's fine. I think every point is going to count here in this sort of race. Okay, draw. Stash Raghavan once again. Or try to. Alright, and attack for four. 
I'm just trying to put the most pressure on as possible. Hit with Raghavan and Exile. <laughs> Basalt Monolith again. <laughs> All right, now let's play the Luris and play Pyrite Spell Bomb and pass the turn. Now I can Luris block, give it pro black, and then I even gain life back. So at this point, Will is almost needs to like untap Mana Vault and hope to draw upheaval or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, you don't really even deal damage if you do this. I gain three and then I take two. In fact, I gain a life. But you do tap my mother runes, which I guess could be good for you. I don't know. Pro black or try to. Oh, solitude. Okay. That's fair. Solitude pitching spell color didn't have double white. All right. I go to tw 11, and then I take 5 down to 6. I think I'm still fine here. Because now I get to go Raghavan. And attack for 4. Keep Mother of Runes back. Hit with Raghavan. Draw my card off the top. It's nothing. And then play Dark Confidant. Because I will just block with Dark Confidant and have it die. And then I won't risk losing to a Bob Flip. And I can also Pirate Spell with my Dark Confidant if I need to. And I'm at 6, so I'm not uh, I'm not going to die from revealing anything. The most expensive card in my deck is already gone. It's Mystic Confluence. Everything else I think costs like 3. No, Force is gone. I think 2 is actually the cap here, which is funny. Let me see if that's the case. Oh, Council's Judgment. Yep, and everything else is cheaper. That's a good Bob deck, I'll tell you that much. All right, so Will is going to take a damage here maybe and either doesn't attack and hopes Bob kills me or attacks and I block with Bob and I take four down to two. Let's see. Okay, so Mana Vault pings. I guess like... Oh, the Cryptic's in the other deck. I was thinking maybe a way to tap these creatures and attack me down to one and hope Bob kills me, but then I can just pirate my own Bob. So I guess, yeah, I still have lethal then. All right, well, I guess, I mean, there are cards magic that can uh, get Will out of this, but there aren't very many. And my teammate has Time Walk. Oh, Emery Lurker of the Lock. I think I'm a lock to win now. Because I've got five attackers and a pirate spell bomb and pass hoping that uh i've got a six drop in my deck <laughs> it's actually kind of reasonable because then if i had to pirate my own bob i wouldn't have lethal anymore but unfortunately i don't have uh oh that was one of my more expensive cards too funnily enough council's judgment just to wrap things up get the cauldron complete out of here and then dash Raghavan. And this is it. No cards in hand. Yeah, let's just attack with everything. Whew. All right. Another hard fought 3 0 for Luris. That's the thing. With Luris, they're always hard fought, and you usually 3 0. <laughs> That's how it feels like, at least. And look, this deck didn't have any power. It had an okay amount of mana fixing, right? It had a fetch and three duels plus a. Uh, off color portico had a chromatic star. The pirate spell bomb did work. Dark confront did work. The counter spells did work. Mother runes and benevolent bodyguard, especially. So, this is how you draft a Luris deck. You might not like it, but this is what peak Luris looks like. And uh, we were rewarded with a 3 0 and a draft win. So, you love to see it. And, uh, you know, that'll do it for today. I appreciate you hanging out and watching me indulge my Luris decks over and over again. But that's because they're so effective and I love playing them. They're like among, among the most fun I ever had playing Magic. And hopefully you feel the same. I'll be back tomorrow with another draft, and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel, and you won't miss a single draft.